stuck in the mud. Remember this video? Boats left lying on land by a quickly evaporating river. Mm -hmm. Then just months later, flood deluge or deluge entire towns. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tough. Mm -hmm. The Mississippi River, of course, is the very identity of Memphis. It drives our culture and, of course, our economy as well. But it may also be our country's biggest indicator of climate change. Fox 13 meteorologist Matt Urasavik explains in this Severe Weather Center 13 investigation. I'm a third generation owner, riverboat captain, and boat builder. For William Lazier, you may say that Mississippi River water runs through his veins. This has been passed down through my family. Uh, in 1960, my grandfather bought the Memphis Queen II. Like his grandfather and his father before him, Captain Lazier spends his days churning through the waters that pass our city, now going on 30 years. I, I built tows. Uh, Put barges together, service docks. Today, he's the president of Memphis Riverboats, a cornerstone of the city's tourist industry. If you've sailed on the Mississippi, it was probably with Captain Lazier. And through the years, he has seen it all. Any towboat pilot that says he's gone up and down the Mississippi River and says he hasn't run aground has just not run a boat that long. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> That's good. The very nature of a river is uncertainty marked by extreme highs and extreme lows. But lately, those extremes are happening more often. Extreme floods in 2011 turned Riverside Drive into part of the river. The river crested at 48 feet, its highest level in seven decades. But an extreme drought just 11 years later stranded boats and uncovered artifacts submerged that? since the Civil War. It's a Civil War belt buckle. According to records, historic levels, high or low, should not happen that close together. And it's a major reason why scientists point to our river as one of our country's greatest indicators of a changing climate. And I'm thinking that uh, we'll see more 2011 floods now and not in 30 years, not in 75 years, but more like every 20 years. Gene Wrench was a meteorologist and hydrologist for the National Weather Service for nearly five decades. As his years have gone by studying the river, he has watched extreme highs and lows happen more often and closer together. So 2011 is an anomaly to be followed by many anomalies a lot quicker. Anomaly of anomalies to be followed by anomalies could be even bigger. It's the very majesty of the Mississippi that makes it such a powerful climate indicator. Its watershed stretches from Montana to New York and into Canada. That means any weather changes in almost any part of the country will directly impact how much water flows past Memphis. At normal water levels, more than half a million cubic feet flow past our bluffs every second. That's enough to fill the Rose Bowl in Pasadena in less than one minute. But last summer, we saw our raging river turn into a trickle. Hot, dry weather kicked in last June and lasted through the fall. The river fell by 20 feet in 11 weeks. The water was so shallow, vital traffic on the Mississippi stopped. Over 2,000 barges backed up in ports at the most critical time possible, fall harvest. In a typical year, 92% of U.S. agricultural exports travel by barge along the Mississippi River. But because barges couldn't move, farmers left crops to die in the fields, driving up food prices and driving down business in Memphis. They ba basically controlled the traffic going up and down the Mississippi River, which actually drove the prices up on um, your, your bulk commodities. The river is the focal point of our economy. The Port of Memphis has a $9.8 billion impact on our city every year. Jobs in warehousing and transportation, industry and manufacturing, all dependent on the port to bring in goods. And the uncertain river means an uncertain economy. I think 95% of all the petroleum that comes in Memphis comes in by towboat and barge. So it, it slowed down the amount of petroleum coming in, which actually, you know, bring supply and demand, your, your price goes up. What climate change brings is not all hot or all cold. 
It is extremes. And months later, we saw that drought turn into a deluge. Last month, a record snowpack to the north melted and mixed with rounds of heavy rain. It filled the river to overflowing, flooding towns to the north like Davenport, Iowa. I mean, a couple years ago, the, uh, the river never went below about halfway on that, that gangway coming down. But, you know, now it's going all the way to the bottom, coming all the way back up. Some of the Iowa flood water you just saw is now flowing past me along the river. Now, the river level as we speak is about 17 feet. We are expecting that level to come down a bit heading into next week and potentially continue to drop slowly into the summer months. We are also falling into an El Nino pattern that could set up drier conditions in the central and northern plains as well as the upper Midwest, which could lead to low water levels again here as we head into the fall. You think about the vastness of the Mississippi River system, it shows how we're all connected here in the United mm -hmm. States mm -hmm. and in North America. Mm -hmm. And the Mississippi River being the canary in the coal mine when it comes to the environment, when it comes to weather, when it even comes to the economy, not just here in Memphis and the Mid-South, but also for the entire nation, and for that matter, the world. Well, I heard one of the world's most you know, prominent scientists, Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah, okay. refer to the Mississippi River as probably the most important organism on the continent. And if you think about it, it is. It's a living, breathing organism in, in the truest sense of the word. And how we as human beings have a symbiotic relationship yeah. with the Mississippi and that, and, that, and that organism. And we do investigations like this, our team of expert meteorologists, because we care about the mighty Mississippi, its impact on Memphis and the Mid-South, the health of our citizens and also the health of the economy, and look for more reports just like this from our team of uh, meteorologists in Severe Weather Center 13 in the days, weeks, and months to come. Yeah, that was well done, yeah. Matt. Very well done. Really well done. Really well done. Mm -hmm. Wow.